People will do a lot of crazy and desperate things for love. But killing someone, perhaps even an innocent person for love, is less common. These are the stories of killer couples who discovered they would be spending the rest of their lives not only apart but behind bars. We have all heard of some famous killer couples from long ago, like Bonnie and Clyde. However, it is less common to hear about couples who not only killed together, but were captured and forced to face life in prison. Number 5. Larissa and Christopher Rodriguez, who are in the Cuyahoga County Common Pleas Court in Cleveland, Ohio, Judge Nancy Margaret Russo is about to read their sentence, but the event that brought them here happened years ago, that fateful night Christopher took an unconscious Jordan Lissa's five-year-old son who had special needs to Lissa, who simply gave the boy a cold shower and put him to bed tragically the next day. The child was found dead, however, instead of seeking help by calling 911, the couple chose a horrifying course of action. They wrapped the child's body in blankets and bags containing mothballs and then buried him in their own backyard almost two months later. The police received a tip from Christopher's brother, which led them to the Rodriguez's home. The side door on it is open. He's not sure if anyone's inside. Well, we got a call on us to check on the well-being of the uh, five, four to five-year-old. But Larissa... Oh, Jordan? Yes, I do. How old is Jordan? On his fifth birthday. Where's Jordan? Uh, he's with his dad. So any numbers, how to get in touch with anybody who actually lives in Texas. I mean, right now, his phone just got disconnected. What's his name? Lissa said Jordan, although she said her son was with his father in Texas, she was unable to provide a phone number to reach them due to a lie. The next day, the police returned to the scene and validated the information provided by Christopher Rodriguez's brother. He had informed the police that the child was buried in the backyard. Basically, he buried him and his girlfriend buried a kid in the backyard. If you thought the couple would have been remorseful for their crimes, you're wrong. Because during their sentencing, things got even crazier following these events. Lissa Rodriguez and her boy boyfriend were arrested and charged in court, however, they entered into a plea deal which resulted in the murder charges being dismissed, and in exchange they pleaded guilty to charges of involuntary manslaughter felonious assault, two counts of child endangerment, and abuse of a corpse back to the court judge Russo proceeds to sentence Lissa Rodriguez. The court imposes sentence as follows. Counts one, two, and three to be served consecutive to each other and concurrent to the sentence imposed in count five for a total sentence of 25 years. But Christopher Rodriguez ruled prior to sentencing. A few words from Russo daily tasks are challenging due to the tragedies we face, and Mr. Rodriguez's music is a terror. I know as a judge I'm not supposed to show emotion. And in 22 years, I never have. This is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. She rejected the 20 to 25 year sentence agreed upon by the prosecution and defense, believing it did not fit the heinousness of the crimes. She had numerous opportunities to intervene, including calling the police to stop the beating and taking him to the hospital. I have to imagine that at some point you got on the internet and said, how do I bury a body? The ruling was upheld after Christopher Rodriguez appealed. Currently, both Christopher and Lissa Rodriguez are serving their sentences in separate locations within the Ohio prison system. The maximum sentence available is 28 years, which is a horrific experience. As a judge, I've never shown emotion, but the behavior of Lissa Rodriguez and Christopher Rodriguez was alarming. Number 4. Jeremy and Christine Moody on the other hand, Jeremy and Christine Moody's behavior was shocking. Jeremy and Christine Moody, a married couple with neo-Nazi ties, were found guilty of first-degree murder for killing Charles Parker and his wife Gretchen in a South Carolina court. Despite their smiles, they were found guilty. The Moody couple unknowingly selected Charles Parker after finding his address on a sex offender register. Their radical beliefs led them to assume that God wanted them to exterminate all sex offenders found by authorities. I.T. I'm sorry for my sin, but I believe God has forgiven me. Please have mercy on Chris so we can grow together. The Bible teaches us not to kill. After hearing their remorseful words and plea to stay together, 
Judge Lee Alford decided to kill. In the movie Justice Demands a Life, the couple shares a final kiss before being separated. Later, the two convicts kiss outside the courthouse, revealing their true feelings. Jeremy would do it again if given the chance. For him, the pedophile was the best day of his life. Number 3. Dia and Eric Millerberg I am appalled and disgusted by the case of Dia and Eric Millerberg. Three years prior, Dia, her husband, and their 16-year-old babysitter, Alexis Rasmussen, were having sexual relations at home. However, things took a tragic turn when Dia's husband injected Alexis with a lethal heroin and methamphetamine mix for the third time, resulting in her tragic overdose. Eric and Dia made the horrible decision to transfer Alexis's lifeless body to an isolated region and bury her in a shallow grave. Alexis Ramsey was gone for nearly a month until a confidential tip brought the case to light. The police retrieved his body and revealed the horrifying reality of the Millerberg's participation. In exchange for a lighter sentence, Dim Millerberg agreed to testify against her husband in court. Dia pleaded guilty to multiple charges, including obstructing justice, illegally acquiring prescription drugs, and desecrating a deceased body. Dia Millerberg addressed the victim's family. Judge Brent West delivered the sentence without making excuses, acknowledging the gravity of the situation. Miss Millerberg in this case, I believe prison is the appropriate sentence. After three years of rebuilding, the judge's decision to destroy was unwarranted. The court's order and sentence was to serve three indefinite terms. DM Mrs. Millerberg received a four-year, two-month prison sentence, while her husband, Eric Millerberg, received a six-year sentence. Number 2. Cyrus Matthews The actions of Cyrus Matthews, who was in court for misdemeanor charges related to a road rage incident, are shocking and disgusting. While some may attribute Milberg's crimes to fear of returning to prison, this pales in comparison. During his escape attempt, Matthews appeared to reconsider his actions. The court bench tried to convince him to return to the courtroom, but his girlfriend interrupted him. With his freedom in sight, Matthews and his girlfriend sped off. The Wadsworth police intervened, turning the escape attempt into a high-speed chase. Eventually, the Wadsworth police rescued Matthews and his girlfriend from the wreckage and transported them to the hospital. Matthews received a 425-day prison sentence for aggravated focus assault for harming his fiancée and the other car's passengers. While his girlfriend was not held liable, this was not the only instance of a criminal exhibiting rage at sentencing. Number 1. Mr. and Ms. Yang Ms. Yang and Mr. Hang were in a South China courtroom battling Hang's mother, who had lent them money for their wedding. As tensions escalated, the mother worried about being repaid. Miss Yang and her soon-to-be ex-mother-in-law argue passionately. Mr. Hang expressed displeasure with his ex-wife's communication with his mother, which escalated into a violent altercation. Altercation amid the chaos, Miss Yang strikes her mother-in-law on the head, angering her husband, who allows her to experience the violence while maintaining order. While trying to separate the trio, a court official restrains Mr. Hang, but the fight between Miss Yang and her mother-in-law continues. The fight is eventually broken up by the police, and the court official lets out an exasperated chuckle. It is rare to watch a courtroom scenario where the mother and son are arrested and accused of assaulting the spouse. Mr. Hang obtains a 15-day detention sentence, while his mother receives a 5-day punishment. So this is the end of our today's video. Do you like it? Kindly give your valuable response in our comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting and informative videos.